Uh, good afternoon everybody, uh, this is Chuck and we are going to go over to something real quick here. Uh, we're going to take a look at steganography uh, and two types. Uh, we're going to look at steganography in images and steganography in documents. Uh, we can also do this for audio and for video but we're just going to hang out with these two for now. First one we're going to take a look at is uh, stego and images. It's extremely effective uh, to hide data from uh, from someone else. Again, we're not dealing with cryptography. We're not making the data unreadable by a third party, but we're hiding the data from a third party uh, by using Stego. The way it works is this when we're dealing with images. The file that we're hiding inside of the image modifies the least significant bit of every byte. So the the eighth bit of every byte it modifies slightly uh, to conceal the text file or Word document or whatever you're hiding inside of it to hide that inside the image. Uh, of course this works best on high quality images like 24-bit images. Uh, it's very very difficult to detect if not impossible to detect. Um, and we're going to use a very simple little program to do it. Uh, there's a ton of programs out there but we're going to deal with one that I use a lot. It's OpenStego and it's one that I show in my class. So I've got two images here. I, I've got an image and a file here. I've just got the whole desert Windows 7 sample image right there and I got a, just a text document you know with some uh, you know, some passwords and it you know nothing nothing special uh, just putting in some junk inside of here just so you can see that we're gonna hide it all right now I am going to run um, open Stego it's a very simple program to use you have two buttons here, hide and extract. Well, we're going to hide the data. Well, it needs to know our message file. What file do we want to hide? So I'm going to browse for it. And there it is. It's passwords. And it's going to ask me, what is my cover file? Well, my cover file is going to be that desert picture. It's going to ask me the output path and the name of the file. So I'm going to save it back to my desktop, and I'm just going to call it, oops, spelled it wrong. I'm just going to call it desert. It does save as a ping. It, that's, that's the only type of file I can save at. I can save it as a ping file. Now again, you can't put in a password. And I'm going to hide my data. And there it goes. Message embedded in one cover file, skip zero files. And we can even hide um, the same message file in multiple cover files. Okay? Alright, so there it is. Well, I'm going to get rid of these two files. So, there's my picture and it doesn't look any different than the original picture. All right, you can go into the properties of it. Nothing's going to really look any different. It just shows a ping image, it's on my desktop, date created, blah blah blah, no, nothing any different. So now I can email this to somebody. I can save it as my wallpaper. I can have it as my wallpaper. And when I need my passwords, well, all I do is I go back into OpenStego and I extract the data. It's going to ask me what the input Stego file is. I'm going to pick it. It's going to ask me where do I want to output it. I'm just going to output it to my desktop. And I need to put in my password. And I'm going to extract. There you go. Message file successfully extracted from the cover file. Passwords.txt. 
and there's my file. Okay. Now, let me show you something that we found in class. If kudos to all of my students for, for figuring this one out. Again, this this ping image here holds my uh, passwords file. But watch this. I'm going to rotate it. And I'm just going to save it as the same name. Now, of course, I probably would have rotated it first, then hidden my file, and then rotated it back, but I want to show you what happens. Now, if I go into OpenStego, pick my message file, which is desert. Oops, sorry, I want to extract my information. Pick my message file, which is desert. Tell it to output to the desktop. Put in my password and extract. Message shall successfully extract it from cover file null. It did not work. It didn't work because we rotated the image. The bits are no longer in the right spot. The image must be exactly the same as it was when I buried the data in it. So now you can add another level on top of it. I could have rotated this image first. You know, portrait. Put my passwords file in it. And uh, hid the file. And then rotated it normal. Then if anybody would have figured out that I used a program to hide some data in it, they could do it, but they have to get the exact rotation that I did. And I wouldn't rotate it a simple 90 degrees, I'd rotate it at like 47.5 degrees. Makes it very, very difficult for somebody to find it. But the great thing is you don't destroy your data, because I can go back here, rotate it back, save it, Go back into OpenStego, extract it, and there's my file right there. So Great way to hide a whole bunch of passwords in plain sight of somebody. Okay. So that's image stego. Now let me show you another one here just real quick. This one's called Snow. A steganographic nature of white space. That's what snow stands for. So I'm gonna go to I have a folder here called Snow. It's just a very simple little application, 61K. But I am going to open a command prompt inside of Snow. And I'm going to create me a notepad. I'm going to create me a README file. And yes, I do want to create one. And I'm just going to put this is a text document. I'm going to do something here just so you can see what's going on. Okay. Now, I'm going to save that. So, I'm in the snow folder. The only thing in there is the snow executable. There is a snow doc there uh, in the readme file that I just created. Okay. So, I have that created. Now, I'm going to hide some data. All I have to do is type the word snow. I am going to compress it. It's just dash C. Dash M. And then your message. So I'm going to say uh, uh, my bank account number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And my PIN is 8, 
five, six, three. Okay. I'm going to put a password on it. Dash P space quote and your password. Then you type the name of the file readme.txt space and the name of another file that it's going to create. I'm just going to call this readme2.txt. So it's just snow dash c to compress it dash m for your message. Your message has got to be in quotes dash p the double quotes your password double quotes the name of the text file you created a space and the name of another text file that it will create and you hit enter it's going to tell you it's compressed message exceeded available space an extra nine lines were added okay now to find your information all we have to do is type in snow oops let me click over here uh, we're just going to type in um, snow dash c because we did compress it dash p and your password and then the name of that second file that you created. In this case, readme2.txt. Hit enter. There's your hidden information. Now, you go, okay, let me go there. That's not too much. All right, let me show you what's going on. Here's the readme file. Okay? Here's the README2 file. They look exactly the same. Look at the size of them. They even match. But if I go into the README file and I select everything, I do a Control A. That's all it's going to select. That's just a regular file. That's the file I created. There's nothing special about it. It needed this file to build the other file. This one is the important one. This is one that has the readme file plus has my hidden data in it. Watch what happens when I do a control A. It selects a lot more space than just where the text really is. Now, it's not like we're dealing with white text. I mean, it, that's, it's, it's not that. It, it's, it's not that simple. It has nothing to do with the color. The text that I typed in is actually hidden inside of the code of the file. It's not hidden inside of this page. So you can have a text file sitting right on your desktop, uh, and unless somebody knows the, the password to it, and knows that you've hidden something in it, they'll be none the wiser. All right, so that's just two versions of steganography. Again, there is uh, audio steganography, there's video steganography. Video, you got to be a little careful with. Uh, it's unless you do it correctly, actually, you can you can find the data very easily. Um, but it's just two types of steganography for for hiding some data. It, image steganography is used a lot for transferring keys. When you want to transfer a, you're using just standard symmetric encryption. You want to transfer that key from one person to the next. That key can be buried inside of an image. So, multiple reasons for using it. All right, well, that concludes this one. And uh, I'm working on a couple of more. I'll have those out shortly. Until then, if you like the videos, give it a, a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting a whole lot more here shortly. Alright, you guys have a great day.